Uh, is the uh, token Marine in the room, which I'm for the Crick. I'm the only Marine on the Crick. I've uh, been in there about a year. Uh, my story is a little bit more, uh, a little bit further back in the past. A mentor of mine, a uh, Brigadier General retired, uh, Tom Drowdy. He uh, served for about 30 years, you know, through Vietnam and through, uh, you know, the first, first Gulf War as the assistant com uh, division commander for, uh, for First Marines, I believe it was. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, my, in my career, I've been in for about five years, you know, I've, I've come up against situations where not so much the physical courage, you know, the, the ability to maneuver under fire or be, or be you know, to, to keep on moving forward when, you know, you very well may not survive that engagement. Um, but for me, really, the, the challenge has been the moral courage. You know, when do you, when do you stand up against a, you know, what you consider to be perhaps an immoral order, if not immoral, but wrong, you know, in, in your, for the Marine that involved or for the operation that you're trying to do? So I'm going to take you back to uh, Vietnam, April 1966. Uh, Captain, then Tom Drowdy, uh, just before he went off to teach at the Naval Academy, was a company commander with my company, 3rd uh, uh, Battalion, 7th Marines, in the Quang Nai province. And they were doing a uh, search and destroy mission in which, you know, they, uh, they came under fire from a, a, a local village, you know, pretty, you know, kind of a, what we'd call today a com you know, complex ambush of, you know, booby traps, um, into IDF, and, uh, you know, direct fire weapons from, you know, crew serve and, and small arms. So, uh, Captain Drowdy, you know, in course with the mission, decided, you know, he's going to take over the village. You know, long story short, they, uh, you know, they got the fire support they needed. They ended up clearing the village at, at the loss of four Marines, but they killed 31 of the Viet Cong. When they consolidated for the evening, they reached their culminating point, General Drowdy retreated the company back to a more defensible position after having, you know, just done his, uh, his site exploitation for the village. And he learned that uh, one, of the, one of the four Marines, a Corporal Frederick Miller of, uh, from Ohio, had died. His body was still out there. All right? And, you know, it kind of paint the picture. This, you know, for those of you who are kind of up on this stuff, Vietnam was before we had the technological superior that we have now, you know, the NVGs, the, uh, the MTIs, for those of you who know what those are, you know, the thermals and, and the ability to see at night. So General Drowdy, you know, decided to go back inside the village and with a couple of his Marines in, you know, backlighted by, you know, basically a burning, burning village to go grab the body of this Marine, leave no man behind. Next day, his battalion commander uh, came out to the position to, uh, you know, to, to conduct a BDA and see how the, the after action was going. Noticed some blood on his flak jacket. Started asking him, you know, what, what, you know, the story. Came out about the story of him going back to get this, uh, this young Marine, this young Corporal Frederick Miller. Battalion commander, didn't like that, and he he started to you know to strongly correct, uh, as, as you might say, counsel uh, Captain then Captain Rowdy about how it was a foolish action, wasting you know, risking his Marines, risking his own life for a, a stupid silly action. Right. General Rowdy, you know, after after the speech was done, you know, he had two options. He could either a walk away and say yes sir and walk away. Or B, stand up for his convictions and say, sir, I understand, but I'm not going to leave one of my men behind dead or alive. It took a few, you know, it took a few minutes, took a few seconds to think this through because the options are in front of him. You know, he, he's, he's either relieved of his command and sent back in disgrace. His friends, his family will never know the true story, especially his Marines won't know the true story because, you know, he was well respected by them. Or B, he can walk away, not be good with himself, but then maintain his position. So he did, you know, something that I've actually heard you know, personally tell me this story when I was struggling with something you know, similar but not as, as great as this. He, you know, looked his battalion commander in the eye and said, Sir, I understand your objections, but if I was given the same situation again, I would do the same thing. So as you can imagine, the uh, battalion commander relieved him on the spot and uh, began to, uh, you know, counsel him about, uh, you know, sending him home. At that very moment, the assistant division commander, Brigadier General Stiles came off a helicopter and was motioned over to where they were. And, you know, you, you got to, you know, be, being this young captain's mind, I'm a young captain, so I, kinda, I can kind of relate. You just got chewed out by your battalion commander. You just got fired, relieved of command, you know, after a, you know, pretty hectic combat situation. General was still great Russian. And now all of a sudden, a Brigadier General, the assistant division commander is coming up, screaming your name. Just a bad day, you know. Comes up to him and pats him on the back and says, you know, to the battalion commander who will remain unnamed, you know, is this the commander of my company? If you had more Marines like this, we'd be a much better Marine Corps. 
Congratulations for what he did, for what you for what you accomplished. General Drowdy ended up receiving a silver star that day for his actions, both uh, you know clearing the hamlet out at the uh, you know at the cost of uh, four of his Marines, as well as his actions, his decision to go back and you know grab the body of young Frederick Miller. And um, you know, and so you know what what I guess what I want to what I want to kind of close by is that. It's hard, you know, being shot at, maneuvering under fire, the physical courage involved for him to, first of all, take the village, and second of all, you know, go back, you know, silhouetted by burning buildings without the, the, the benefit of night optics, which probably wouldn't have worked anyways, to grab the body of a dead Marine, to leave no man behind. That's one thing, you know. He had it plenty of times. He was, you know, decorated for, for that many times. But as he, he himself has told me the moral courage that it took for him to put everything that he valued and loved on the line, his company command, his career in the Marine Corps, his, the respect of his Marines, family, and friends, for the sake of a principle, for the sake of don't leave a man behind, was the hardest decision he has ever made in his 30 years in the Marine Corps and his 20-some cents in the, uh, in the um, you know, civilian and uh, um, Marine Corps world. And so, you know, it's not so much about me. You know, I've, obviously I've had some challenges myself, but... It illustrates the importance of integrity, the importance of ethical, moral leadership when it comes to the business of life and death. You know, my integrity as a leader, his integrity as a leader, was the reason that more of his Marines came home than not. That's all I got.